signaling the end of the post-Neronian chaos, the eight-month emperor Vitellius would fall to the man who made researching this video so damn hard. Saying Aulus Vitellius had an easy career would be an understatement. Born in September 15 AD, the son of a rock star politician, he predictably shot up the cursus honorum. After Galba removed the treacherous Lucius Rufus from his Germanic governorship, he called upon Vitellius to fill the void. This proved to be a fatal lapse of judgment, as Vitellius inadvertently won the unwavering loyalty of the uppity German legions, so much so that they hailed their governor as emperor in January 69 AD. Well, surely a purple toga couldn't hurt. Vitellius was now committed in his bid for the Principate. Dispatching two military columns, not even the ascension of a new emperor, Otho, could stop Vitellius' military advance. Having ample imperial power bestowed upon him by the Senate on April 30th and arriving in Rome soon after, the newly dubbed Forever Consul endeared himself to pleb and patrician alike through public games and allowing the equites to become imperial civil servants. Despite soaring popularity in the West, by July, Titus Flavius Vespasianus, a general largely without a contemporary rival and fueled by prophecies for telling his own principate was drumming up support in the east. Worse yet, Otho's Danubian legions were sympathetic to Vespasian's cause, swiftly moving towards the capital. Thanks to some treachery on the part of a Vitellian general and two devastating military defeats, Vespasian's men had reached Rome itself by December 19th, taking the city after two days of urban warfare. In desperation, Vitellius blockaded himself in the Golden Palace disguising himself for good measure. No amount of golden girdles could save the emperor from fate, however. He was stripped, tortured, and ultimately tossed into the Tiber River. 